Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Just in case that voice you just heard didn't mean anything to you, that was George Valentine, with his usual commercial for Let George Do It. Now, before you listen to any more, you better make sure you have your winter woolies handy, because this is indeed a chilling tale. It's called The Marauder, and it's all about a guy who wants to bump off a cat. No, I don't mean his wife. I said cat, as in lion, tiger, panther, puma, or alley. Now, this may sound pretty silly, but just hold base a while, then make up your mind. Dear Mr. Valentine, my name is Rafe Saxon. I'm a writer, a very foolish writer, because like all of my breed, I've had a lifelong desire to spend a winter in the woods to get away from the tensions and fears and neuroses of the city, to live simply with simple, normal people. Well, here I am, a tiny deserted resort in the Lobo Range, and, of course, it's all an illusion. I'm surrounded by more tension and fear than I ever knew before. And a friend of mine, the owner of the place, Hans Bjorkman, has become neurotic to the point of insanity, to the point where I can't control him to the point where all he thinks of is the marauder, the invader, the pirate and cutthroat of the animal kingdom. Mr. Valentine, this man is obsessed by the idea of murdering a mountain lion. Listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let George Do It. Oh, if we can only get out of this wind. Yeah, I got a big fire in the fireplace, lady. <laughs> Hey, where'd you leave your car? About five miles back, that hill beyond the Aspen Grove. Oh. Yeah, the road was like glass. <laughs> it's frozen practically solid. <laughs> hey, couldn't climb it, I know. Up one step and down two. <laughs> it's a funny winter this year. Hardly any snow, just ice cubes and hailstones. And here we go. Doors around the porch. Oh, thank heaven. Yeah, I don't think your friend Saxon's back yet. Oh. Been out communicating with nature. <laughs> he's crazy like an Eskimo. Guess he's going to write a book about the South Pole. Hey, is your name Hans <laughs> Bjorkman? Uh, me? Oh, heck no, no. He's crazy, too. Everybody is except me. I'm just uh, peculiar. <laughs> hey, here, better wipe your feet. Listen. Hey, George, it's a woman. Something's the matter with it. Uh, what's it sound like to you, city boy? Well, it doesn't sound like a baby crying. What was it? Cat? Cat? Yeah, if that's it. Cat, puma, cougar, panther, nuisance. Take your pick. Mountain lion. Mm. Oh. That's a bad winter for everybody, I guess. Hey, sounds hungry, don't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, so am I. Come on, let's get inside. Only shut that door quick so Bjorkman don't hear it. You mean hear that wail? Why not? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know, mister. Something's going on I don't get the hang of. But on old Hans, here's that long tail out there. He just sort of slides back in his rocker. Yeah, well, search me. I just poke cows for a living. Does Hans own some cattle? No, no, no. A few head and some chickens, that's all. Uh, pairs of them, all in pairs like Noah sitting up in his ark. Uh, but I don't work here, if that's what you mean. I'm waiting for a job for the summer, that's all. Bears hibernate, why shouldn't we? My name's Peanut. Peanut? Uh -huh, sure. I'm an uh, indoor style cowboy. <laughs> I work two months, make enough playing bunkhouse pinochle to loaf the other ten. <laughs> yeah. oh, why not? I like to mosey around, keep people happy, make them laugh. <laughs> and old Hans, he's, he's been good to me a couple of times, so... So, here you are, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I wish I knew why. I wish I was smart enough to know how to help the old billy goat. Hey, he's old country and you know, always hard to get close to, sort of proud. He built this place here with his own hands. Give you the shirt off his back, but... Pinochle, he... is that them? 
Uh, what? Did Mr. Valentine... Oh, yeah, yeah, they're here. <laughs> Come on down, Fatty. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've been getting your room ready, Miss Brooks. Uh, there's some hot chocolate for you on the stove. Hot? Oh, thanks. Uh, who's that? Tell Hans I'll be right there. Oh, we're fine, thanks. That his wife? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good kid if you don't go for too much brain. <laughs> you see, Hans just disappeared a couple of years ago and brought her back, and uh, here she is. Yeah, she works her head off, too, when she's not worrying about him. Everybody seems to worry about Hans. Yeah. It's over her head, too, I guess. I tried to kid her out of it. She don't know what upsets him. Well, nobody knows, except the cat. Oh, here I am. Oh, I'm so sorry I wasn't downstairs when you came in. Hello. I'm Olga. Hello. Uh, how do you do? <laughs> well, wh what's the matter? Isn't my hair straight? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Everybody's crazy. She says a thing like that and don't even look in the mirror to find out. <laughs> oh, be quiet. Your hair's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid Pinochle gave us the wrong impression, that's all. He called you fatty. Oh, him. Well, she is. <laughs> well, come on, let's get that chocolate. Chip. I guess we didn't expect you to be so young, that's all. What? Oh, gosh, I'm 26 already. <laughs> now, I never have time to fix myself up or... <laughs> oh, Pinochle, stop. Yeah, sure, sure. Just an ugly old frow. <laughs> stop what? <laughs> oh, don't pay any attention to him. He's the most <laughs> awful... Hans. Well, <laughs> come in, come in. Well, I'm only kissing your wife, that's all. You don't have to point a gun at me. Huh? Oh, <laughs> oh excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> oh, there, there's nothing to listen to out there except the wind, darling. Of course. Hello, my dear. Well, these, these are Miss Brooks and Mr. Valentine, the friends of Mr. Saxon. How do you do? It's such a pleasure. How do you do? Hello, Mr. Bjorkman. Well, I am the host, and I am late, and I let in the cold. There is no excuse. Have you poured me brandy, my dear? How are you, Mr. Valentine? My little place is so hard to get to, I'm afraid. Oh, fine, fine, thanks. Well, that's uh, quite a gun you've got there. <laughs> yeah, he uses it to put holes in the broad side of his barn, don't you, Hans? <laughs> you are interested in guns? Good, good. Pinnacle and Saxon, they are boys. They don't understand. My rifle from the mail order house. Here, I show you. When a man has a house and his land, he has a gun. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> just don't wave it around. Like Wait that. a minute. Huh? There, there wasn't anything, dear. Shh! Well... If you're listening for that lion... I didn't hear anything, Valentine. No, Hans. Oh, for heaven's sake... Be quiet! Pinochle, all I was going to say was that I did hear it. it. Sounded like it came from about the same place as the last time. Mr. Valentine... Be quiet, I said! Excuse me, please. I will see you later. Yeah. Yeah, he is out there. We could hear Mr. Valentine and I. Excuse me. Well, hello, everybody. Mr. Saxon. Are you Valentine? Yeah, hello. Well, how do you like my nervous host here? Put it down, Hans, put it down. No hunting today, there's nothing out there. You have been outside, Rafe. You must have heard it. No, 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 just a little wind in the tree. Hans! Look out, you crazy! Give me that gun. I saw him, I tell you, I saw him. Give me that. And he left the barn. You couldn't hit anything at that range. Let go of me, I tell you, let go! Oh. Yeah, it is my house. It is my gun. It is up to me to kill the Narota. So, stay here, all of you. This time I will get him. Oh, brother. He shot past you in the doorway, Mr. Saxon. Maybe it scared you a little, but that's nothing but to do. you've seen how he acts. Every day and night for the past week, he's been out trying to find that brute. He doesn't even take time to eat. Well, what's wrong with that? This is his place. He's got a few head of stock to worry about. A hungry lion is dangerous. Why shouldn't he try to kill it? Why should you all pretend you don't even hear it? No, no, listen to me. It's a long story. It isn't what he does, it's how he does it. It's not normal, it's yeah, not... Yeah, yeah, it's too long a story for me to listen to. What? Uh, Mr. Valentine? I'd rather see what happens myself, thanks. Me? I'm gonna go out and help Hans run down his marauder. Oh, look, Hans, it's been an hour since I we know. started. I know. Another circle we go in here. Yeah? Haven't even seen a track yet, have you? Ground is so hard. Look at the sky. It 
will snow maybe later on. Sure, sure, and by then my feet will be frozen. Hey, Hans, how many chickens or whatever you got is this thing actually... I have good, strong buildings. Nothing has been touched so far. But he is hungry. You can tell. Can you? You're not much of a hunter. I have worked all my life to build what I have. There's been no time for hunting. But I will find him. I will kill him. Ever think of traps or setting out poison? I will kill him myself. I will kill him and see him die. Well, how about calling in one of the state hunters to get him? I will kill him myself and see him die. You will, huh? He has no place in the world. He is a thief. This place is mine. All my life I've worked on it. But at night, he comes with his flat yellow eyes. Oh, yeah, I have seen him several times besides this afternoon, snarling, hungry, long as a man, crouching in the frozen grass. A thief, I tell you, with no business to come stealing a thief. All right, all right, all right, calm Bye. down. Why should I laugh and stand by when everything I own is threatened? Man, stop by... it, will you? Uh, Man's castle is never secure, is it? Uh, that? Uh, the, the kitchen door is open. We will not find him tonight. I mean, you can work all your life for certain things and never be sure of hanging on to them. Like her. What did you say? Yeah, standing there in the doorway. Worried about you, I guess. Your young wife. Oh. All right, Olga, we are coming. Uh-huh. She's very beautiful, isn't she, Hans? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sure, sure, that's a compliment to you. Hans, did you ever hear of a man getting unreasonably mad at something when that something isn't the real cause of his anger? I am tired, please, you, you make so many... Words. Taking it out on something, I mean, like the wrong marauder? Well... Taking it out in hatred of a mountain lion. I don't understand. But... Now, come on. Come on, Hans. Tell me. Whether you admit it to yourself or not, which one of those guys in there are you worried about? Buddy? With Olga. You know which one it is you'd like to call a thief, a marauder? A sneak who comes into a man's home to steal his no. wife? No, stop it! Now, take it easy. You can't just... say things like that! Oh, forgive me. I... She, Olga, is my wife. You do not understand. She is mine. Oh, forgive me. Oh, yeah, sure, Buster. I'll forgive you. Only which man is it? Which one do you really want to murder? You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. And now, back to George Valentine. Marauder, a hungry, dangerous mountain lion, or is it a man? If your name is George Valentine, you're ready to agree with Rafe Saxon, the man who sent for you when he said this place, this deserted resort in the frozen Lobo Range, is filled with tension and fear. And you'll also agree that the owner, Hans Bjorkman, is obsessed with the idea of murder. Only murder of what? Or of whom? Now, this isn't the kind of place where one sleeps well at night. Even Claire Brooks, particularly when... What? George. George! Yeah, sure, I'm awake. Come on in. Did you hear that? Yeah, shh. It was a rifle shot. Way off. Uh-huh. And the wind's died down. Could have been several miles. Not in that direction, I think. Well, it's so dark. There's no moon. Huh? Mr. Valentine? Oh, hello, Mrs. Bjorkman. Wake you up, too? I heard a shot. Where's your husband? Where do you think? The shot woke me up, and he was gone from bed. But here, his gun was gone, too. But I found this on the pillow. I know, huh? Oh, here, let me see. 
Olga, my dear, don't worry. I will be back soon. This time I know where to go. This time I will kill him and watch him die. Signed, Hans. George. Yes, Mr. Valentine. How could he know? What, what could he know now that... Oh, well, I don't understand what... <coughs> Listen. Yeah, he could know what he wouldn't tell me. He could know which one it is that he wants... The lion. Same direction. You got a flashlight, Olga? What? George, wait. I'm going with you. There's a ladder. Wait for me, too. Hey, come on. Step on it. Call Pinochle and Saxon, too. Listen. George, it was a door slammed. The other side of the house. Mr. Saxon isn't in his room either. One of them just took off the front way. Come on, they're both gone. We'll catch up. George, how can you tell what direction they... Oh, well, they'd go to find him, too. It has to be Hans. He has the only gun for miles and miles, and... Well, if he has found the lion at last... I got a pretty good bearing, I think. Besides, it's snowing a little. Come on, move fast. We gotta beat an awful lot of brush in an awful hurry. George, wait. Saxon, I... Have you seen Hans? I Have you... know, I know. I heard it. I'm looking, too. I saw your lantern half an hour ago moving through the trees. Then I lost it. I think you're headed in the no, wrong... No, not, friend. You are. What? Well, I don't know. I was working late in my riding, and in the room, the crazy hoot owl, I, I thought he was in bed. I came tearing sure, out... Sure, to... sure. Just give me your flashlight. Follow us with the lantern. All right, Mr. Valentine. He must have really gone off his head this time. Hans! Hans, can you hear me? Oh, save your breath, Saxon. It's still across the field and down toward the little lake, I think. You can see way back on a line with the lights from the house. Ah, snow in the face. Miserable, insane thing to be doing. <laughs> Olga's a wonderful woman. I didn't You're say wrong. anything about Olga. Well, she loves Hans. I know he's older than she is, but she does. Works her head off to make him happy. I told you I didn't say anything about her. But she's beautiful, all right. But then nature's rough. It's always paired off. But you can't protect a home forever when the ages are that far apart. You know the stuff Hans talks about. What should be done to marauders who try to break up the pairs. To the strays, the lone ones who try to break up... Hey, Pinochle, that's you. Where are you? By the shore of the lake. Chased out of the house before you did, I guess. But the lights burned out. Here, get over here quick. Here, 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 give me that place. Oh, what is it? George, what's happened? Well, I, I stumbled. I dropped my light. And look, look at my hand. It's blood. Yeah, I stumbled on something. Don't you get it? Hans got him. Don't you get it? The marauder. Look! Holy smoke. Look at the size of that mountain lion. So there really was one. Right through the eyes. Hey, hey, look here, he drilled him right yeah, through the... Yeah, sure. Close range, no wonder. Yeah. But look at the paw, the leg practically blown off. Hans must have had the muzzle practically you next to... You want this, George? Yeah, give me that lantern. I, I can see something over here. <gasps> Hans! Hans! <laughs> He's dead, Mr. Valentine. Uh, look, only a few feet away, too. Now, the cat must have jumped him. Uh, they will sometimes, you know, hungry, skinny ones like that. That's why he fired so close, George. Not in time. Not in time to keep himself from bleeding to death, you mean? Look at those claw marks. All on right, his... I got eyes. Ah, now, take it easy, city boy. But we better get him back to the house anyway, don't you think? Snow's getting worse. Sure, sure, it's a bad winter for everybody. Lion and all. Yeah. Here, take this handkerchief. Get some water on it, will you? Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. Well, there's nothing we could have done, Valentine. It's like Pinochle says. Hans just slid back too far on his rocker. Nature caught up with oh, him. Oh, shut up. George. I'm all right. I'm all right. Just give me his gun there, will you, Saxon? Oh, here. He's still hanging on to it. Huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, here, uh... Here, Valentine, you said you wanted this handkerchief wet. 
but there's almost enough snow on the ground. To cover things up, I know. Huh? Marauder. <laughs> Poor old crazy Hans. Valentine, what in the name I of... don't know, Buster, I don't know. But stand very still, both of you. Only three shells have been fired, but it's hard to keep you both covered in a place like this. Mr. Valentine. Olga, stay where you are. Your husband was murdered. What? George, what are you talking about? Pinochle, where'd you find the water? Huh? Valentine, if you don't know claw marks when you see them... Be quiet, will you? Pinochle, the water, answer me, where? Well, why in the lake, naturally. Why isn't it frozen like everything else in this godforsaken country? Well, uh, the branches freeze and fall, that's all. They break the ice. I'm not that much of a city boy. Well, how should I know? Olga, come here. Hold this gun on him. Whatever you say. Yeah. Hang on to my hand, Brooksy. Yeah, be careful, George. Hey, look out. That lake's over your head, Dave. Oh, you know about that, huh? Sure, here's where the ice is broken. Well, that's just what I got to... Now listen, Knuckle. Three shells missing. And that's right, we heard a total of three shots, remember, Brooksy? Over an hour ago, back at the house. That's right, George, but I... And the lion screamed after the third shot. You heard it, that's how it happened. Yes, yes, I remember. Keep that gun straight. It's hard enough to even see people in this crazy place. But wait a minute. Hans killed the lion with a clean shot through the eyes. Close range, right through his brain. How could he have screamed after? He couldn't. So it doesn't make sense that Hans and the lion killed each other now, does it? Hey, wait a minute. Look here. Marks around the tree. What? Uh, Let me see. A chain or something. Sure, sure. That's it. Here, get a loose branch there. Hang on again, Brooksy. What are you doing? Another real close shot smashed the lion's leg, didn't it? Or was it already smashed and the shot was just to cover up the marks there might be? I don't know yet. I'm just guessing. But I know one of you guys had nearly an hour alone out here after the shots to set the scene any way you wanted. Yeah. Yeah, there is something here. What is it, George? Something that might have been anchored to the tree originally. Something Hans would never use. But if somebody else did, then it would prove Hans wasn't jumped by that lion. He was... Oh, listen to him. Listen to him. Riddles. <laughs> he doesn't make... A, a change. And a trap, Angel. A steel trap on the end of it. The trap the lion was in ever since yesterday. Since he'd been screaming from the same place. Yeah, look, even bits of fur still on it. So it was murder. Why would anyone throw a trap in the lion? I'll take it from here, Saxon. Just help me out. Are you crazy? If it wasn't murder, it couldn't have been. There's a gun on you, friend. And I guess you're it, aren't you? Saxon wouldn't have got me here in the first place if he was going to pull one like this. Uh, Get away from me, old Look out, George! Hey, you He'll get away. He's running. Give me a gun. Stop it, Olga. It doesn't do any good for you to kill him. He's gone. He's gone, Valentine. The marauder's gone. He beat us here to the house, all right. He even cut the telephone wires. Yeah. Leave daylight in a few minutes. Well, I'll start out. But where? He could be hiding almost anywhere outside. Oh, they'll get him. Don't worry, Saxon. He hasn't even got a gun. And if you ask me, he's running. (laughs) Marauder. Strike and run. I guess he did want to break up the family, didn't he? Kill Hans and then try to get Olga. Pinochle must have had that trap out. Before you even came here yesterday, Valentine. Yeah, that's right. And then he had to go through with it. But, George, how could you have guessed what not even Hans guessed, that Pinochle was really getting ready to murder him? Wording of that note to Olga, remember? Oh. Hans went out after the lion. Said he knew just where to go, just where to get him. Well, how could he have been so sure? Unless somebody had come to him in the night and told him where it was. Pinochle. And he led him out there until they came to where the lion was, screaming in the trap. Yeah. And... Then Pinochle had all the time in the world to... Sure, sure, kill them both. The rest was easy. And it would have worked. Nobody would have investigated. The snow would have covered everything. And the human thief, the worst marauder, might have eventually persuaded Olga to... What's the matter, George? George. smoke. I just figured out why Pinochle stopped by here at the house, that's all. Why? He's running, all right. The keys to my car are gone. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. (sighs) 
my chin up, Angel. We parked around this bend, remember? Look, the snow didn't cover all his tracks. You can see where he came. He was running. George, I'm still trying to figure that business of the shot in the screen. Yeah? I mean, no matter how you add it... Doesn't make sense, I know, Brooksy. Pinocchio laughed. City boy, he said. Well, that was what started me going, because I thought it was impossible. But I've just realized even when we knew about the murder, it was still impossible. Look. Look, the car, it's still down there. He didn't take it. Oh, Lord, no, those tracks. Well, it's nothing to... Where are you going? The Marauder, Angel. Well, look at those tracks. Look why Pinochle was running. Something else I should have caught. Lion was in the trap all day yesterday, but Hans saw a lion and fired at it down by the barn around dusk. We just thought he was seeing things. But it was another lion screaming. Pinochle! There he is! There he is! Dead. He couldn't even make it to the car. Come on, how easy. Don't look at him, Brooksy. Oh, George. It's all right, Angel. It's all right. Dangerous thing to be a marauder, isn't it? To murder a husband or a wife. Nature's the same all over, I guess. Everything in pairs. Pinochle was killed by the lion's mate. just heard The Marauder, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 